Welcome to this tutorial video for Adam Matthews' Slavery, Abolition and Social Justice resource. In this video I will show you the key features and functionality of this collection so that you can use the resource to its full potential and in doing so enrich your research and learning experience. I will also provide you with an overview of the Caribbean related material contained in the resource and pick out a few representative documents. Slavery, Abolition and Social Justice comprises a vast body of material sourced from a multitude of archives drawn from the Atlantic world, illustrating the enormous breadth and variety of slave experience between 1490 and 2007. This is a perfect resource for teaching and study of slavery and world history. Close attention is given to the varieties and legacy of slavery, the social justice perspective, and continued existence of slavery today. The project aims to assemble many substantial clusters of material offering in-depth case studies in America, the Caribbean and Brazil, along with important material examining European, Islamic and African involvement with the slave trade. We've identified 16 different thematic areas which the resource encompasses. There is extensive coverage of topics such as the African coast, the Middle Passage, the varieties of slave experience, whether it be urban, domestic, industrial, farm, ranch and plantation, spiritualism and religion, resistance and revolts, the Underground Railroad, the abolition movement, legislation, education. All these can be explored through a huge body of correspondence, rare books, maps, ships logs, visual sources and manuscript accounts offering a diverse array of research opportunities. A good place to start in a resource are the introductory pages where excellent context to the nature and scope of the project is given by theme. One of the themes that contains much Caribbean content within this resource is resistance and revolts which provides access to documents relating to, amongst others, the history of insurrections in Haiti and Jamaica. This resource has a strong body of material addressing slave conspiracies and uprisings in Jamaica during the 18th and early 19th centuries. We focus on a notorious Takis Rebellion of 1760, and also provide files on the Second Maroon War in the 1790s. Other notable files on Jamaica include the slave registers of Port Royal in 1817, and returns of slaves for St Thomas in the Vale. Another strength of the resource is the Christmas Rebellion of 1831-1832, also in Jamaica, and the later Morant Bay Rebellion of 1865, led by George William Gordon and Paul Bogle. There are many more documents, as you can see, links to some of these documents are provided as well. I'm going to click into one of these now. I'll go on to explain the functionality of what you can do within this page later in the video, but for now it's useful to understand that we can click through from that thematic page through to the documents uh, that have been cited within it um, and see the metadata here for the page as well as clicking through to view the document itself. As for Haiti, the history of slavery there is also well accounted for through documents in this resource. There are many files on the rebellion led by Toussaint Louverture against the French as well as documentation surrounding Haiti's subsequent independence. Strengthening the material representing resistance in Haiti are the renowned Kurt Fisher manuscripts and some excellent photographs which have been sourced from the Schomburg Centre for Research and Black Culture at the New York Public Library. The papers we have included from there are also strong on Grenada and Puerto Rico. The other substantial body of material relating to the Caribbean has been grouped thematically within slavery and agriculture. There are papers relating to plantation life and other forms of agricultural slavery, including the rare Castle Weymouth papers, which are Jamaican plantation estate papers. These are from the Institute of Commonwealth Studies, and there are also letters and journals of Caribbean plantation overseers sourced from the Merseyside Maritime Museum. Through this collection you can get an insight into the cruelties of the white hierarchy and slave schedules defining the workforce. There are some very resonant stories of black labourers there. The collection speaks to the business of cultivating and processing sugarcane. Finally, I would point you towards the slave testimony theme. Here you can access some slave narratives. We've picked out some of the more interesting narratives, including some from slaves based in Cuba and the West Indies. From anywhere in the resource, users can select from the top-level navigation tabs, enabling quick access to the key areas of the resource. They can also perform a search, or access the advanced search page to apply more search restrictions. Our editors have also compiled a helpful list of popular search terms which provide another alternative for searching the documents and features. Registering and logging in to My Archive enables users to save searches and documents between sessions, so when they return weeks or months later and want to revisit the same search or documents they looked at before, they can do so with ease. When logged into My Archive, you can also run a slideshow of the documents you've saved. We'll look at My Archive in more detail later in the video. 
Elsewhere on the home page, users have the option to scroll through the themes window and click on the image to view that particular thematic area. Finally, home page shortcuts provide quick access to tutorials, my archive and the court records. Highly curated, unique documents form the core of this resource and a popular way of browsing them is through selecting the Documents tab in the top navigation bar. This returns a documents list that users can refine in a multitude of ways to suit their specific search interests. Documents will be ordered alphabetically, but you can refine a list to show only those documents that are relevant to a particular theme, world region, document type, from a specific library or archive, and from within a specific date range. Alternatively, if you know the name of the document you're interested in, you can locate it quickly by selecting from the alphabet key. You can also get a flavour for each document by viewing the thumbnail image. And finally, this symbol indicates that the document is full text searchable. So if we are interested in only seeing documents that are relevant to the Caribbean, the best way for us to do so is to refine our documents list by selecting Caribbean from the region filter. This returns only those documents that have been tagged by our editors as containing content relevant to the Caribbean region. Clicking on the document link will take us through to the document details page, where we receive more detailed information about this document through displayed metadata, enabling you to, at a glance, see the key themes, topics and regions that relate to this document. In fact, all metadata is searchable within this resource. So we can see this is a register of the number of slaves exported from Africa between 1755 and 1768. We're told that these are the records of the company of merchants trading to Africa, and because Caribbean is mentioned in the region field, we know that many of the slaves listed in this document would have ended up in the Caribbean islands. So within this page you can also export the bibliographic details of each document to EndNote and RefWorks. You could download the entire document or a selection of pages to PDF, and also save a link to this page within My Archive. If you decide you want to continue browsing other documents, you can do so by either returning to the search results, or by clicking through to the previous or next document from the search results list. From this page you can also view the document itself, which is what we'll do now by clicking here. Faced with the document, we are presented with a number of different options to customise our user experience. We can magnify or shrink the document, which is particularly useful when observing old manuscripts that may have unique handwriting. The document can also be rotated clockwise or anti-clockwise, and we can also drag the document around to read. The option to view the original or transcription is also possible with printed sources within this resource. When viewing pages from printed documents, you can search the text of the page through a basic search box. Here, though, we can return to the document details page to be reminded of the metadata fields associated with this document, or continue browsing through the pages of this document. To save the image so that it can be returned to at a later date at your convenience, you can select Add to My Lightbox. My Lightbox is a section of My Archive where you can save any image from the collection. We will look at My Archive later in the video. Finally, within the screen, you can also download the image to PDF. Now that you've discovered how you can browse documents, let's show you how searching works. There are three main ways to search for documents in this resource. The first of them is basic searching. A free text search box is immediately accessible from the home page and from most pages within the resource. Use quotation marks to search for phrases or use the asterisk symbol if you only know part of the word. So if we search for plantation, We get a search results list, very much like the documents list we saw earlier when browsing. Documents are ranked in order of relevance to your search, taking into account number and density of hits and where they appear within a document. So for instance, documents that have plantation in the title or metadata abstract would be ranked highly. You can also sort results by title or date. Again, we can save the results to my archive, or you can email them to yourself. You can click directly into a document from the search results links in the email. Results can be exported as a text file. You can also change the number of results to display per page. Or use the filter to search results by essays, printed material, manuscript material, external links, or court records. So if we select Granada Plantation documents, 
we see it returns the document details page with the search term highlighted within the metadata. Documents with sections such as this will have links that take you directly into pages of the document relevant to your search term. Again, the associated metadata informs us that the document as a whole mainly concerns marriage contracts and the sale and acquisition of sugar plantation estates. So we know that clicking on one of the page hit links, we will be likely presented with content related to one of those subjects. So let's click here into box 1, folder 14, that we are taken into that section. And we can see by zooming in on the page itself that this document concerns the purchase of an estate. So we know that we've been taken into a relevant page for our search. We also have the option of jumping to one of the other sections within the document through this right-hand navigation here. Another main avenue to search for documents is through the popular searches tab, accessed from the resource homepage. This is a great place to refer to if you are unsure where to begin your search. Our editors have assembled lists of the key topics, places and names that feature in the document level metadata. So for our purposes, let's select from the region and places. Caribbean, and let's select Jamaica. Returning the list of documents that we've seen before. So selecting Jamaica from the popular searches list performs the same search as if we have typed Jamaica into the basic search box. And as we're typing in the search, the results will be ordered by relevancy, but can again be changed to be ordered by title or by date. So we can work our way right through from the popular search link all the way through to the document details. the popular search term highlighted in the metadata again. In this case we have selected a document that details slaves that were tried for their involvement in the Christmas rebellion and the punishments they received. As with the other search methods, we can click through to the document itself to examine the source. So here we can see the list of slaves who were punished. For users who want to perform more sophisticated searches, the advanced search link is their best option. It's located up here in the upper right-hand corner of the screen, next to the popular searches link in the keyword search box. These three search options are available on most pages within the resource. Within the advanced search page, it is possible to set multiple search parameters that deliver refined search results that meet all of the criteria set. This resource is equipped with Boolean functionality, allowing you to search for documents that meet combinations of keywords or phrases. For example, let's suppose our research interest is in plantation housing and slaves. We've entered the three keyword search terms in each of the boxes here. We're going to choose to maintain the AND condition from the Boolean searching. We could also choose to search any one of the reference title, author, places, names and topics. But for our purposes here, let's search all available metadata by searching keywords anywhere. Extra keyword fields can be added using the plus button. Word stemming is another way of expanding a search. Using word stemming returns the derivation of words. I'm going to check it here for our search. And equally, if we wanted to see documents where the desired keywords or phrases were mentioned close together, you can set a proximity value. Here we're looking for cases of where all three of plantation, housing and slaves are mentioned within 30 words of one another. Proximity searching is useful in specifying the context in which words appear. It's more accurate than using just the Boolean searching and broader than a phrase search. We have more chance here of returning documents where slave plantations and housing are discussed in relation to one another. Of use to many will be the date range restriction, which can be used in conjunction with the keyword search terms you put in. Equally, if you only want to search visual resources and not written documents, you can check the visual sources gallery. We might also choose a particular region, theme, library or document type to refine our search results even further. And again, these conditions work in conjunction with the other search parameters we've put in place. Let's select Caribbean from the region meaning the search we're about to perform will be looking for documents relating to Caribbean where plantation, housing and slaves appear within 30 words of one another. So let's run our search. Results are again ordered by relevance, so clicking on one of those top documents should take us into a source that has multiple references to our search terms. And here we can see and directly access the relevant transcript pages for this printed document. We can even read a snippet of the text where the term appears to understand the context in which it appears, another useful way of deciding which page to view. So let's suppose we think this link looks interesting. 
Clicking through takes us into the transcript page with the search terms highlighted, immediately drawing our attention to the passage that interests us. We can see that all three search terms appear within 30 words of one another, rendering a section of this text which is meaningful to our search, i.e. it's discussing how slaves were housed in quarters and assigned small tracts on the outskirts of the plantation. It doesn't take long for us to establish that these are slaves in Jamaica through further inspection of this page, and hey presto, we found something of use to our query. We can also choose to view the original image by clicking here, or return to the transcript. We can also choose to return to the document details page for this document. We can skip through the pages, we can jump to specific pages, search within the document itself, and skip to the next page with uh, the search term hits that we'd entered originally in the advanced search page. As well as that, we can also add the document to my light box and download it to PDF. The primary source documents in this resource are supplemented by a host of secondary learning tools that will provide useful context to the documents. The first that we will look at are the essays, which have been written by leading academics in the field and that can only be accessed in this resource. There are 21 essays in total, which together assess a broad range of topics relevant to the study of slavery. As I explained earlier, resistance to slavery in the Caribbean is perhaps a subject that is most comprehensively covered by Caribbean material in this resource. And you may find that the essay by Professor Vereen Shepherd from the University of the West Indies, Mona, who is an authority on enslavement in the Caribbean, to be of greatest use to you. The essay is called Resistance to Enslavement in the Caribbean and Latin America, 1492 to 1888, and I'm going to select this now. So this extensive essay provides a thorough introduction to the history of resistance to colonialism, citing notable instances of resistance in several Caribbean nations, such as St. Lucia and Jamaica. Professor Shepard discusses the insurrections of the Taino peoples of the northern Caribbean islands of Dominican Republic, defending themselves against Spanish subjugation in the late 15th and early 16th centuries. The essay also concentrates on slave activity in Latin American nations, and so if you wanted to drill down to the Caribbean-specific references, I recommend you scroll down to the section on African enslavement and resistance. Here, Professor Shepard discusses what happened to Africans as they arrived off the ships in places such as Antigua, how the system of slavery was constructed in those regions, and eventual uprisings and resistance to the system. Professor Shepard writes about the marine communities and the uprisings in Haiti, Dominican Republic, and in Jamaica. Many of the slave revolts were actually armed, and this essay cites several instances of armed insurrections in the countries I've just mentioned, but also in the Virgin Islands, Barbados, and Cuba. So armed revolts and revolutions is another section of the essay that I recommend you take a look at. As we scroll down, we can see just how thorough this essay is. There are links to relevant documents and resource, regularly referenced throughout each of the essays, and this is an excellent way for you to engage with the primary source materials and to more easily understand their significance to the wider themes of slavery. We can see here there's a dedicated section to the Haitian Revolution of 1791 that was led by Toussaint Louverture. And there's also a section on the Jamaican Christmas Rebellion as well later in the essay. I recommend that you take a look at these two. Another essay of use will be one written by Professor Sylvia Frey from Tulane University. This essay is called Resistance and Rebellion in American Slave Societies, and we're going to go into this now. The essay considers petit marinage, grand marinage, and pre- and post-revolutionary plots and rebellions. There is some evaluation, too, of the agendered aspect of resistance and the important role played by female slaves, with Professor Frey recounting the story of Rosalie Vincent, who was able to use legal systems in Cuba and Haiti to free not only her children, but also guarantee the freedom of generations of unborn from a life of servitude. The section on pre-revolutionary plots is particularly interesting, as it looks at a more granular level at the circumstances and causes that led ultimately to revolutions. Professor Fillet claims that the Caribbean rebellions were quite homogenized in their aim and the way they were carried out, such as the overriding objective to establish island-wide African-led governments. She compares this to North American rebellions, which were different in cause and character between different regions within the U.S. The essay moves on to explore the role of African military training and traditional African religious practices as key factors in the timing of notable Caribbean rebellions in Antigua and Jamaica and the recruitment of members for those rebellions. The map section of this resource is another interesting way of engaging with material within the resource itself. I'm going to access it here again from the top level navigation. 
You can view full colour historical maps or select a region in our interactive map to view all primary source documents for that area. So by selecting view all documents by region, we can select any region of the world to return all documents that relate to that region. So here we can click into the Caribbean from quick links, or we can select the region that's highlighted on the map. Returning the list of documents relevant to the Caribbean and that can be explored by clicking through to, as we've seen elsewhere in a tutorial video. All of the maps within the collection have been conveniently brought together in this original maps gallery, where they can be filtered by region. So here I'm going to select the Caribbean. Thumbnail views provide a useful indication for the style and content of the map. Both the thumbnail and titles can be clicked to take you through to the map. And here I'm going to select a map, a new and exact map of the island of Barbados in America according to an actual and accurate survey made by William Mayo in 1794, and this has been sourced from the National Archives in London. This map can be zoomed in on and rotated in the ways we have already shown earlier in the video. So next I want to show you some of the further resources we have in slavery, abolition and social justice. And we're going to go into the visual sources gallery. This gallery showcases the wealth of visual source material featured in slavery, abolition and social justice. It evokes a sense of the significant individuals, places and events that have shaped the history of slavery. The sources within this gallery include paintings, photographs, illustrations, prints, lithographs and maps. Within the gallery, we're presented with multiple options to view and sort the images. We can alter how many images we see on one page, the size they are displayed, show those for a particular theme or region first, export them to PDF, run a slideshow, or add them to my lightbox. So let's sort the images by region so that we're looking at those that are relevant to the Caribbean. We're going to select a few of the images that we want to run in the slideshow by checking the boxes. That should do it, and we're going to click Run Slideshow of Selection. You can see the slideshow move through the images. You can move through the images manually if you want to look at them more quickly. You can pause the images if you want to inspect it in more detail. And then restart the slideshow again by clicking play. You can also return to the main gallery by clicking the X box. If you only want to look at a single image, then simply clicking on the image itself will take you through to the gallery where you can perform all of the usual functions that we've seen before, such as zoom and rotate, and you can also see the metadata associated for the item here, which can be hidden or expanded. If you want to see a timeline of important events during the period covered by the resource, you can do so through the chronology. Here you can easily pinpoint which entries correspond to events that took place in the Caribbean by referring to the colour-coded key. Slavery, Abolition and Social Justice contains a multitude of tutorials which are excellent resources demonstrating how material within the collection can be used within teaching and course packs. The tutorials are split by those relating to court records and those specific to the main themes of the resource. Let's look at the theme-based tutorials in which our editors have crafted a tutorial for each of the main thematic areas in the collection. For our purposes, let's select Jamaica. Here we can see that the tutorial poses typical questions that might form an area of study and for each of those questions cites appropriate documents within the resource that can be analysed with this question in mind, as well as carefully selected external sources that you may choose to consult. Each tutorial provides a bibliography of further reading to provide wider research opportunities to scholars. One of the tutorials that may be of most relevance to you is the one on Jamaica which addresses questions such as how were slaves employed on the plantations and links you to plantation related documents in the resource. Other tutorials that you might find interesting would be those mirroring the thematic areas that I talked about earlier. Resistance is certainly one of those. As with the Jamaica tutorial, our editors have crafted possible questions which frame how you might choose to evaluate the historical Caribbean sources at your disposal in this resource. We have suggested you consider such questions as what caused slave rebellions, and what were the consequences of revolts for slaves. Pointing to documentation concerning the rebellions in Jamaica and Haiti, such as the Maroon Wars and the confessions from slaves involved in the Jamaican Christmas Rebellion of 1831 to 1832. We touched upon my archive and my lightbox earlier, 
So let's show you how this useful aspect of the resource works in more detail. If you have access to the resource, you will need to register first to use My Archive and My Lightbox. Registering is quick and simple and will only take a couple of minutes. Once you have registered and revisit the resource at a later date, you will need to simply enter your username and password to log into My Archive and My Lightbox for the duration of that session. When logged into My Archive, this is the view you are presented with. Here we can see documents and searches that I saved to My Archive and My Lightbox from previous sessions. Within My Archive there are several functions which you can perform. All previous searches which you have saved to My Archive can be returned to by clicking on the hyperlink title. I'm going to do that now just to demonstrate. So we've clicked through from My Archive and it's returned the list of results from a previous search I ran. Equally, clicking on one of the documents you've saved to My Archive will take you through to the document details page for that specific item. If you've previously saved images of documents you've seen, you can get to them through My Lightbox. Within My Lightbox you'll have the same possibilities to view and sort the images as you have when looking at the images in the Visual Sources Gallery. Additionally, you can create bespoke folders to organise your image by creating a new scrapbook. So I'm going to show you how to create a new Lightbox. You do so by clicking here, and let's call our new Lightbox Gallery Images. Click Create, and you get this notification telling you that a new Lightbox has been added to the drop-down list. To add some images from the default scrapbook into your new Lightbox folder, you want to select the images here. So let's select these three, and you want to click Copy Selection to another Lightbox, which will bring up this box, and you can select which of your folders you want to put them in. So let's select Gallery Images and Apply. And we're notified again that the images have been added to that light box. So we've come out of that and actually choose to go into the gallery images light box. Those images we'll see in there. And there they are. We hope that you find this resource easy to use and that you feel able to fully utilize the potential of it. If there's any aspect of the features or functionalities that you want to be reminded of, the help and teaching pages are very useful reference points. The detailed teaching pages include screenshots to assist students and scholars through the collection. Each document has a unique URL which means it can be easily embedded into course notes and reading lists. Equally, we encourage use of document images within PowerPoint. Use within Blackboard and similar technology is also very much encouraged, and as I mentioned, documents can be printed off and given out as handouts. If at any time you'd feel you'd benefit from more guidance about how to use any aspect of the resource, you can click on the help pages, where you can jump to the relevant section that you're seeking help with, and see screenshots displaying clear guidance on how you can make the most of that aspect of the resource. We encourage anyone using Adam Matthew Collections to contact us with feedback, whether student, faculty or librarians, we'd be delighted to hear from you. We hope you enjoy your use of slavery, abolition and social justice. If you require further support or information, the Adam Matthew team are on hand to offer dedicated assistance.